I told the story before many years ago when my wife and children ran to the living room and heard me blasting in tongues. And they asked me, Daddy, they ran out. Daddy, what is happening? And I said, I am fighting. What was it? I said, I felt, I saw an arrow. I felt an arrow fly. And I stood where the arrow came and retrieved it and refired back to sender. We've heard stories of people walking on the road. Not for something they slumped. Psh, gone. Driver driving by the highway. Suddenly the, 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 the passenger said, please driver stop, want to go to the restroom or go to, uh, go to his themselves. And driver put his head on the steering. The passengers came back from the bush and said, driver, can we go? No, no answer. They moved him. The man was gone already. We live in a world of flying arrows. Faith is our shield against the fiery arrows of wickedness. Number two, faith is our weapon of victory in the battles of life. Faith is our weapon of victory in the battles of life. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. First John chapter 5 verse 4. And this is the victory that overcometh Cometh the world, even our faith. Faith is your weapon of victory, weapon of overcoming in the battles of life. And like you have heard, I heard God's servant for the first time, Bishop David Yeriko said, Life is a battlefield, not a playground. For we wrestle against flesh and blood. Life is warfare, not funfare. Whether you are interested, there is battle. Interested or not, there is battle. So, faith is your weapon of victory. Battle from the realms of the occult, the witchcraft world, the demonic world, conspiracies here and there. It's your weapon of victory. Why is faith necessary? Number three, faith is the life wire of the just is the life wire of the just. The just shall live by his faith. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. The just shall live by his faith. Romans chapter 1 verse 17. He said the righteousness of God is revealed. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by his faith. The same thing is repeated in Galatians chapter 3 verse 11 Hebrews chapter 10 and in verse 38 the just shall live by faith what are we talking about your life is at the mercy of your faith both the quality of life and the quantity of life call it durability and dignity of life are anchored on faith how colorful your life will be on earth and how durable it will be is around your faith. The absence of faith can mean death suddenly. The absence of faith can mean living like a shadow. How necessary is faith? Thought. First I said that faith is our shield against the fiery darts of the wicked. Then I said that faith is our weapon of victory in the battles of life. Then I said, faith is the life wire, life, life, life wire of the saint, life wire of the saint. It connects the saint with life, life wire of the saint. And then number four, faith is our connector to our inheritance in God. Connector. Whatever God has for you is connected by faith. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. That you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith 
and patience inherit the promise. There are promises meant for you, but they are inheritable by faith. Faith is the arm with which we receive our resources in God. That's how vital faith is. You can be holy, you can be clean, you can be pure, and all that is extremely necessary because without holiness, you can't make heaven. He didn't say without faith no man can make heaven. But of course without holiness no man can make heaven. But your inheritance and the dignity of your existence on earth is anchored on your faith. That is you can be a very very upright person and die as a pauper. Upright and upright and everything person and yet oppressed and molested. Where faith is not developed. So faith is our connector to our inheritance in God and finally faith now these are among other things there are many more things but faith is key to wholeness in life to be whole that is when it is said it is well with you for it to be well. so for me it was not an ambition that was about to be fulfilled it was something God wanted And do you hear, remember what I said many years ago? The will of God is answered prayer that is waiting to be prayed. When you know what God wants, to, himself wants to do, that thing has already done, has, has already happened. He's only waiting for who will, who will, who will line up with him to cause it to happen. Somebody say amen. For example, you want to go into politics? Is it the will of God? Is that the line God has carved out for you? If that is not the line God has carved out for you, there is no prayer of faith that can take you there. And if you take yourself there by any means, you may not end the way you want. You may have taken yourself out of relevance. The question is, you want to go to America, question is, is that the will of God? Is that where God wants you to spend the rest of your life? If that is not, then you, you may go there by hook or crook and find yourself to blame. But when you know the will of God for sure, when you know what God from the scriptures, you know the general thing he wants you to do and specific thing he wants you to do with your life, the devil is a bastard now. It's a bastard. <laughs> it's a bastard manner. Hallelujah. Faith begins when the will of God is known. Determine to know and follow the will of God for your life. Confidence in God happens when you know that what you are wanting <laughs> is also what God wants. You are wanting what he wants. For God walketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Then when you are at such a point, resistances can't stand you. Finally, determine to live out. Determine to live out the word of God. Determine to live out the word of God. Just live it out. For the word of God is a fuel of faith. Is the food of faith. Romans chapter 10 and in verse 17. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Determine to live out the word of God. Live by the word. Feed on the word. Live on the word. Live by the word. Live with the word. Take steps by the word. And you will see very drastic results. Dear brothers and sisters, let me draw the curtain today. You've heard so much today on what it means to walk by faith, which is also what it means to walk with God. The center of it is an intimacy with God, a union with God, the knowledge of God. Fuel it in this season and your life will never be the same. Hallelujah!
Are you blessed? Stand up on your feet in your house and in your, your, your bedroom and in your office, wherever you are, and lift up your hands and let's appreciate the King of Kings. Let's appreciate the Lord of Lords. Let's worship Him. Let's honor Him. Let's adore Him. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the honor. Father, we give you the adoration. Father, we give you the, adoration. Father, we give you the worship. The supremacy, the dominion, the rule, and the sovereignty. Blessed be your name. Honor to your name. Adoration to your name. Thank you, Master. In Jesus' precious name. So much has been preached tonight. And I am going to ask you. Lord, pull me to yourself. Draw me closer to you. I need to know you. Pull me into intimacy with you. Drag me into relationship with you. There are many things I have known, but I need to know you. I, have, I can spend so much time with many things, but I want to spend time with you. Lift up your voice and speak to God right now. Draw me close.